I'm going to um, talk to you a little bit today about seasons. The first of September normally marks the beginning of spring. Spring. So when you come to the worship party, put a flower in your hat, um, wear a floral shirt or something, hey, because it's, it's springtime. But what we understand and know about seasons is that seasons have been given to us, and, and in a biblical sense, sense it's, a, it's a metaphor, well, not necessarily a metaphor, but seasons physically have been given to us uh, to mark the change of cycles, hey. And that there is seasons in an agrarian culture to plant and to harvest and to till the ground and to do all, all these kinds of things. And God, by His grace, has given us these seasons to mark our lives and to help us navigate the course of life. And the Bible is filled with ideas of seasons. We've been reading through the Psalms. And the Psalms in particular tell the wonderful uh, story and bits and pieces of uh, David. And we know from the scriptures that David, uh, we know him as a shepherd boy, as a musician, as a poet, and as a king. And his life certainly was marked by different seasons. Hey, Seasons when he was stuck out in a field, tending his father's sheep. That when Samuel passed by his house to anoint David to be king, his father saw, thought so little of David that he wasn't invited to the anointing lineup. He was left out in the field. David went through all kinds of different seasons. The psalmists tell us about the seasons of life, that they ebb and flow from high to low, through jubilation and exaltation, to remorse for our sin, like we read about David this week in Psalm 51, to the frustration and the anguish of life, to the suffering and the pain of life, all these things. And God marks our life with seasons. And so, in, in a biblical sense, seasons are a rich metaphor that we find throughout the Scriptures, and they describe the different phases or the cycles in our lives, the times in our lives. And they reflect, in many ways, God's divine order and timing. There's an order to our lives as Christians, that God marks our lives, and there is a timing. I've said this many times, and I will probably say it for the rest of my life, but one of the hardest things to navigate in our Christian walk is the timing of God. How many of you want things, you've prayed about things, and you want to happen right now? Yeah. Right now. It would be right now. That's how I want it to happen. And God's like, just be patient. Just hold on. I've got this. And the Scriptures tell you and me, that God's timing is always perfect. It's always perfect. That He's never early, like my wife. And He's never late, like the pastor. <laughs> but He's always on time. But God's timing and our timing sometimes doesn't marry. And so it can cause a wrestle in our hearts, a frustration in our hearts. Hey? And those are the difficult things. But I want to say to you this morning, and the Psalms keep on telling us, and we're going to make an announcement this morning. We can share some stuff with you. But God directs our steps. <laughs> I want you to do that very awkward thing. We don't really do this here at Cedar Hill very often because my wife's an introvert and she hates these kinds of things. So I've learned my lesson. But I want you to turn to the person next to you and just say, God directs your steps. <laughs> now, now what I want you to do is I want you to put your hand on your heart. And I want you to tell yourself, God directs your steps. Mm. God leads you. This morning, Raven encouraged us, reminded us from the Scriptures, hey, in a moment where she just kind of spoke out during worship, that the Lord is a shepherd. He's your shepherd. And He leads you and He leads us through the seasons of our lives. So let me pray. And I'm going to read a Scripture to you in Psalm 37. And we'll continue. Father, this morning I thank you that you are faithful to lead us and to guide us. That Lord, you never falter. You never stumble, trip or fall. And you certainly never misstep. You're never out of timing or out of sync. You're never going too quickly or slowing down behind us. Lord, you always lead us faithfully. And I thank you this morning, Father, that you would continue to build in us a trust like the Psalms so urge us. Lord, we, we, last week, we're just, we, we're in, in walking in the Psalms, we're walking with those that have learned to trust you. Continue to teach us to trust you as we learn the truth that you direct 
our steps. You lead us. And you do so, so that we might grow and flourish in life as you have planned and purpose. And so we bless you this morning, Father, and thank you for your grace in Jesus' name. Amen. So Psalm 37 verses 23 and 24 says this. It says, The Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. It may be a little different on the screen. But isn't that beautiful? He delights in every detail of their lives. This morning, the Lord delights in the details of your life. He knows every aspect of your life. He knew it before you anticipated it even. Or, or, or thought that it might pop up, pop up on the horizon. God knows every detail of our lives. Though uh, The Bible goes on to say, though they stumble, they will never fall, for the Lord holds them by their hand. This is the reality. The Lord not only knows every detail of your life, friend, but He walks with you in an intimate way. Like just think about, as I was thinking about the Scripture, can you imagine just walking, um, you know, just walking somewhere in the shops and all of a sudden someone just randomly walks up to you and holds your hand? <laughs> you'd think this person just escaped <laughs> the cuckoo <laughs> the cuckoo bull <laughs> you know like it's, it's like they're crazy they've been in the hospital or something i remember when karina and i first started dating we were walking somewhere like like literally i think we just became boyfriend and girlfriend and we we're walking in the shops and i just grabbed her hand and she was like why are you holding my hand in public you know <laughs> little did she know that she would have to learn her husband has no problem with showing affection in public <laughs> But it could be a little bit crazy, right? Why? Because holding hands is reserved for only intimate relationships, say. At least in that way. And so there's this, there's this intimacy that God wants to do life with you. An intimate place. And He wants you to know that He's glad to direct your steps as the godly. Because He delights in every detail of your life. Ecclesiastes 3, 2 to 8 lists various life experiences, birth and death and planting and uprooting, weeping and laughing, mourning and dancing. You may be remembering a song from the 60s or the 70s. Hey? Da, 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 da. No, anyway. But they are. They're, every life is rooted in a season and a time. And I want to say to you, God is sovereign over the seasons of our lives. Just like God, the other day I was, I was walking on the beach, um, we were down early, we walked down to the beach, or I went down to the beach and the sun was coming up, and I just thought to myself, I can do nothing to stop that sun from rising. Hey. And isn't that a comfort to know I don't have to do anything to make sure that tomorrow happens. It's just going to happen, because He's sovereign, and He's done that. And the reality is that God's going to keep on walking you forward. He's going to keep on leading you into all that life has for you and all that He's purposed for your life. And so there's many different aspects of what we could talk about, about God being sovereign. But I want to say to you, He ordains your steps and He leads you. If you'll trust Him, He will lead you and He leads us well. And His, perfect, his timing is always perfect. Even when we can't comprehend it or it doesn't seem to make sense for us. So God leads us, and He leads us well. So this morning, having said that, we uh, are going to make an announcement this morning, uh, and it pertains to Gavin and Wendy Walter. So Gavin and Wendy have been elders here at Cedar Hill Church uh, for the past six years, and they have been on eldership for 10 years. And so for 10 years, they have been leading, and um, they've been graced and anointed to do so. But over the last couple of months, Gavin and I have been chatting, and uh, he has sensed in his heart, both him and Wendy, that they feel like their season to lead as el elders is coming to a close. And they feel like that God wants them to uh, step aside from that for, for the moment. And so um, we've been praying and thinking about it, and not to be overly biblical, but it seems right to the Holy Spirit and to us that this would be the right moment for that season to come to a close. And so we're going to take a moment to honor them this morning. And so as I spoke about God directing our steps and leading us, God's directing their steps. Now, not leading, directing their steps out of the church. <laughs> Gavin even said to me, Where's I? You, you know, I don't like sitting anywhere else but on the front row. I need my space. I said, it's, you can sit on the front row. That's no problem. <laughs> That's no problem at all. And so they're not leaving 
and they certainly aren't in a difficult space or trying to navigate some big issue in their lives. They are happy and healthy. They are in love. They love Jesus. They work hard. They're just amazing people, and they're good friends. I was, was going to say, you know, I'd give their marriage a 9 out of 10. If it, I'd give them a 10 out of 10 if it wasn't for Gavin, but I'd give them a 9 out of 10. <laughs> But they are just wonderful, wonderful people. And I know that we can say that um, about people, but when you get to live your life with them, Gavin and I have spent many hours praying. We have spent many hours together praying. We spent many hours in what we feel like sometimes is superfluous meetings. He has spent many hours signing off things for church here. He, um, Vanessa hunts him down to give him a folder full of things he's got to sign and take care of and all those kinds of things. In fact, when we were talking this thing through, Pat said to Gav, hey, Gav, why don't you stay uh, on the finance team? And I answered for Gav and I said, listen, Pat, <laughs> Gavin would rather have both you know, his eye teeth pulled out than have to sit on the finance team. <laughs> but, um, but they have come to a place, and Gav, I'm going to give Gavin Wins uh, an opportunity to chat in a moment. They've come to a place where they just feel like, that door is closed, and they feel like they need a new season in our community, together with us, and loving Jesus. But they have been remarkable. They really have been. And so I want to talk just for a little bit about that. So do I have my, I know, that when I did this, I thought the staff are going to give me a hard time because I did this myself. But anyway, here we go. So this is a, an awesome picture of Gavin, and I'm, I'm going to have four pictures come up. But this one, first of all, is just to talk about my friend. So I want to say, Gav, thank you for being a good friend. I've said this before, but Gavin's the kind of person, if you go to war, you want to go to war with Gavin. If you've got to fa face an enemy, you want to face it with Gavin. Because Gavin is a faithful friend. He's a good friend. And these things are, are what gave him a, a platform to be a leader in our church, is that he is a faithful friend. If he loves you, he will love you. And I want to say thank you for loving us, Gav. Thank you for uh, sticking it out with us. Thank you for being faithful. And I know that it sounds like a, a swan song, like, you know, they're going off somewhere. But we, I just felt like we needed to honor them this morning because they've served diligently. You know, when you, when you step into the role of eldership in a church, again, I, I don't know how to maybe say these things, but there is, look, I understand that you all have important jobs, all of you, that you do wonderful things in the world. And so I don't say this to dishonor anybody else, but I'm inclined to agree that the greatest position of leadership anywhere in the world is to help lead God's people. There is more at stake in leading God's people than in any other function or role in the earth. If we believe what the Bible says, then that's for, for you know, it's, it's certain. And leading in the house of the Lord is is by the grace of God and he gives us the grace to lead and he anoints us and God has certainly done that for you guys and will continue to do that. But there's also a pressure we carry and a responsibility that we carry, a spiritual one. And sometimes we need a break from it and sometimes we need a reprieve for some of those things. And Gav, you've been a faithful and you have been diligent in the way that you have um, dispatched your duties as an elder. I know that sounds formal, but, but you have. You've been faithful. You've been reliable and you have been dependable, if we've needed you for anything, if we've needed to work through anything with you, like you are there to help us do that. And I want to say thank you to my friend, Gavin, and to Wendy, to say thank you for being there for us, and thank you for loving this house and serving these people. Many people, they, you know, they might not know how you do that, but your faithful praying and preparing and loving and shepherding and making faithful decisions. Gavin is a solid friend and a solid person. And then... That's where it ends. <laughs> there we go. Then I'll put this picture up here, and this is Gavin, the elder, and the preacher, and the leader, and the teacher. And, you know, when God graces us and He anoints us to lead, and I'm going to talk a little bit about this in a moment here, we often feel ill-equipped, unprepared, and totally inadequate at having to lead. Your pastor feels like that more often than not. I'll just be honest. And I know that for Gav, he has felt like that through the seasons of leading in this house. 
But Gav, I want to say, we have seen you grow and mature as a leader, as a teacher, and as a preacher. And we are so privileged, and we value all that you have deposited into our lives through teaching and leading, not just leading moments like this, but prayer moments and uh, leading men uh, and all those kinds of things. Gavin has uh, faithfully led a group of men that meet every single, well, every week, but every second week now. Um, and he also leads a trio. And he's faithful to invest his life into other people. I want to say this. Uh, he has been a faithful servant of the king and to us. Every leader in the church first is a servant. Paul says in Ephesians 4 verse 1, he says, I'm a bond servant of, of Christ. Doesn't give himself the title of apostle. He says, I'm a bond servant. I'm, I'm one that has dedicated my life to serve the king. And Gavin has done the very same thing. He has, called to, he has stewarded and cared for us, and he's been faithful. In 78 and verse 72, it says this about David. It says, and David shepherded them with integrity of heart and with skillful hands he led them. And I want to say, Gav, thank you for having an integrous heart because you are an integrous person. True leadership really begins with that kind of heart, a heart fully devoted to God, marked by integrity and sincerity. An elder has exemplified this by serving with a pure heart, and Gavin has done that. As an elder, you've exemplified this, Gav. You've served with a pure heart, and you've sought to honor God, even when you've had to work through difficult things. Even when you've had to wrestle with your heart in all of this, you've done it well, and you've been integrous. And it's a lesson for all of us, hey, that when we lead in life, we are to lead with an integrous heart. That means we are to lead for the sake of others, not our own. To lead in the church means I lay down my life to serve others for their benefit, not my own. Not for my own personal gain, but for theirs. That's a good leader. And when you see a leader who serves you in that way, follow them. Better yet, be a leader like that. Be someone like David who shepherded with the integrity of heart and with skillful hands. And alongside that integrity, Gav, you are a skillful man. You have many talents. Dancing, not one of them, but you have many talents. <laughs> to be an effective leader requires a certain kind of skill set. I'll be honest, when I think of the movie Taken and that guy Liam Neeson, I do think of you, Gav. <laughs> but Gav, you are wise and you're discerning. And you have an ability that I've seen grow by God's grace to lead the church. And I'm grateful for all the decisions that you've helped us make in keeping us safe and keeping us faithful and keeping us planted in the purpose and the plan that God has for our lives. And so I just want to take a moment to say thank you and to honor you for that. And so Gav has been a good man and a faithful man and taught us well. So thank you. And then wins. I don't know why you had a spoon in your hand there. <laughs> but I also want to say thank you to you, Wendy, because you have taken, I know, sometimes under duress, but you are way better at it than you give yourself credit for, but you have taught faithfully, you've been faithful to serve. But more than that, because Wendy has preached from this pulpit and she's led and she's done all those wonderful things, but more than that, Wendy, you know, the Bible says that when you're an elder, you, you need to lead in such a way that you have uh, I can't think of the word now, but you have favor in the community. That the community will honor you. And when do you exemplify that? I, unfortunately or fortunately, don't know what yet to believe, but I'm on the governing board at Men's and Toady High School. And Wendy works there. And I have never heard anybody say anything other than high praises for Wendy. Those children, I don't know, you know, when I was at school, I didn't like many of my teachers, but her children love her. <laughs> they really do. And so, Wendy, you have, you have lived the life of an elder in our community. You have faithfully served, and you continue to faithfully serve. You are both such diligent people. If you ever have the privilege of going to their home, it is stunning. It is stunning. Gavin does moan about it because Gavin will want a holiday, and Wendy has planned 27 days of labor <laughs> while they redecorate and repaint things and do that. But you are people who are excellent, excellent in what you do, Excellent in the way that you carry yourselves in our community and out of our community. And we are grateful for your friendship and your leadership and you being in uh, this community. And so, Gav, thank you for faithfully praying. Oh, dear Lord, let's go back, 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 back. <laughs> that one. So, 
this picture at the top left hand, my left hand, obviously your left hand too. Um, it was the, probably the first time we ever went away with Gavin and Wendy to the Berg. And, um, and we went away and we had a whole lot of fun together. And I just want to say thank you, Gav, for sticking around. <laughs> Inside joke. But thank you for sticking around on the eldership team and for, uh, and for being with us. And we've had lots of fun. I had a picture of you uh, with an Oreo on your forehead, which I thought, okay, maybe let me not put it up there. And another one with you running with a poiky pot that I was tempted to put up. But if you know Gav, he does love to have fun. He loves to cook. He loves to make good food. And he loves eating good food with good friends. And so thank you, thank you, thank you. But thank you for faithfully praying for us. Uh, this is a picture of us uh, just doing some prepping and planning. I feel like we prepped and planned and didn't do what we prepped and planned. But anyway, <laughs> we prepped and planned nonetheless. And then just uh, this last picture, if you can put it up. Thank you. So Gab, I want to say again, thank you for standing with us. Thank you for standing with me. And uh, I really do appreciate that. I know that there's a lot more communicated in that phrase that you understand that others might not. But thank you. Thank you that you <laughs> didn't leave me in my pluckies on my, el- my ace uh, on the stage. But thank you for sticking around and helping us serve. But thank you for leading the men in our house. You have been so faithful to do that. Gav takes a group of guys away uh, every year for fishing. And apparently they talk about Jesus as well. <laughs> Or they pray a lot for the fish they're about to catch. But he has invested his life into a group of men and he's done so faithfully. And I, I want to say thank you, Gab, because you've modeled a life of servanthood. You've modeled a life of trusting Jesus. Gavin is the kind of person um, that if you do hang around with him, he will not try and convince you in any way that he's perfect. He's, he is a very real person. He's an honest person. He's an integrous person. But what you will find is someone who desperately longs and loves to live like Jesus, who wants to be more and more like Jesus. And it's been a wonderful privilege leading with you, Gav. Um, and I, I, do, I do know that we'll probably lead a little more together later on, somewhere down the line, in that formal capacity. But I know you're still going to be doing lots around here. Gav is still going to lead his men's group. But I want to say this to you. The Lord says in Psalm 37, 3 and 4, says, Trust in the Lord and do good which you do. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. And Gav, you've been faithful. I've seen you trust the Lord. But I want to say to you, there's more ahead. God is going to bless you in all that you do because He continues to do that. I know in your business um, ventures that God has been doing that and you've seen more and more of that. But I want to tell you, you and Wentz, keep delighting in the Lord. Keep joying in Him. Keep enjoying Him. And uh, he will continue to give you the desires of your heart. There's one or two other things I'm going to say, and I'm going to let them have a moment to chat, and then we are going to conclude this morning. We have something to just give to them. But uh, uh, yes, just, just this. Gavin is also the kind of person that doesn't need a title to lead. And so you will see him leading around here. You'll see him involved in doing things. They're going to take a time to, to rest a little, which they need to do. Uh, but he is a leader. And he hasn't been a leader because he was given a title. He is a leader. I was just saying to him this week, I think when we were chatting, this Gav, is, this, everything about him is a leader. Just like many of you in this room have the same propensity. Thank you for living that out. And I want to remind you both that there is a gift and a grace and a calling and an anointing on your lives. There is a prophetic grace. Gabe, we've I've seen you give the most amazing words to people and encourage people, both you and Wendy. Keep doing that. Keep growing in that and keep serving God in that way because He's good and He's faithful and He's kind. But again, thank you seems such, like such a trivial thing to say, but thank you. Thank you for serving. And so family, they're going to uh, step aside from eldership. They feel like this season has closed for them. And again, Uh, We just want to say thank you. So why don't you give them a big round of applause as they come up to the stage. (laughs) Love you, Love you. Ha, ha, ha.
Come on, Gabe. I just told them we'd go to war together. Now you're crying. What's happening? <laughs> yeah. Um. So, um, yeah, like, like, like Wes mentioned, um, I've spoken to Wes around this, this topic for a while. Um, and I just want to reiterate something. This is not something because Wes and I are in a bad place. It's not because we are, what's the best term, chapful, eh? <laughs> of the church. And it's, it's got nothing to do with that. And, and I'm, I'm so gracious that that we serve a God that speaks to us in, in the way we understand stuff. Eh? And um, I was battling through this because I am one of those people that I, w- when I set my mind to something, I, I, I climb in 100%. And I've done that even in scenarios that weren't obedient to God. <laughs> and, but but yeah, I devote myself to whatever I put my name to. And... Um, and so the, for me, it was a big battle, this thing, because I really felt in my heart that, that the time was, was up. But I'm like, no, you, you've committed, you're dedicated. And in, in one of these like, internal turmoil moments, God reminded me of a rugby match. And so often you see these guys playing and there's this big clash of heads and the guy's down and he stands up and he doesn't even know which way to, to go. He's like, he's really like a dear Makar. And the medics are coming on like this and they, and they say to him, okay, come, we're going to take you off the field. And he starts fighting. He says, no, 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 no. I've still got it in me. I can carry on fighting. I can carry on playing. I can carry on playing. But the medics know best. Because why? Because he's got a whole career ahead of him. And if they let him carry on playing and he's got that, pulled hamstring or the head concussion or whatever, there's a good chance that his career will end. And as God played this picture out in my mind, it was like sort of like a reassurance that, that this is the time right now where I actually need to go sit on the bench. I actually need to take that time off. I am still very much part of the team. I am still very much in the game but I'm no longer participating. And, and I hope you guys understand what, what, I'm trying to, what I'm trying to get across, is that so often when elders step down, it's not because of a good thing. I think if any of you watch anything to do with the church around the world at the moment, man, it is, it is not looking good for the church. Um, and we're doing it doing such a bad job of representing Jesus to the world as a church is a greater thing because leaders are not given opportunity to rest. Expectation on leaders is immense. And I'm not only speaking of myself, I'm I'm speaking of Wes and Pat and Mandy and leaders around the world. There's never given the opportunity to sit down, step back and relax. We, we even got to a place where now we, we're discussing how do we put sabbatical as, a, as an instruction to our leadership. Yeah. Not a wait until the guy's burnt out and send him on sabbatical. Because that is so wrong and that's so bad. And so I think this has been, been like a, a tough moment for me. Because I absolutely love doing what I do in the community, in this church. I love leading with Wes and Core. I love, I love being part of this community, um, but I really feel that God's taking us on a, on, a, on, a new, on a new season in our lives, you know, and, and I'm glad Wes brought Ecclesiastes up because Ecclesiastes is one of my favorite books in the Bible. It was probably one of the least read books that I'd ever read until we did the wisdom series and I was forced to preach on one of the books. So I decided I'd take the one that challenges me the most, and that's Ecclesiastes. And ever since then, I've grown to love the wisdom that God has put in that book for us. And that is one of the things that, that, that I really appreciate about Wes and Core is their trust in us as a couple. Um, they trust in us as leaders, as elders, um, and we have grown immensely, not only because of what Holy Spirit has done in our lives and us being 
um, you know, allowing him to do that. But because it's through the leadership of Wes and Core, they are beautiful, real people. And I love beautiful, real people. I do not like pretenses. I do not like false smiles. I like somebody that can come to me and say, I'm having a tough time. I like somebody to, that comes to me and says, I think I've messed up. I like somebody that's real with me. And, and Wes is as real as you're going to get. We've had conversations that I think if some of you sat in those conversations, you go, are you guys leaderships over the church? Why? Because we have the same things, and we go through the same things that you guys go through. The same battles, the same emotional things, the same pressures, the same stresses. And yet we have to lead, and we have to lead well. And God gives us the grace to do that. And God has given Wes tons, and Corinne even more because of Wes. That's, that's my little dig at you, because you took one of me. And I get 10 out of 10, but it's just because of Wendy. <laughs> but, but God has given us this grace, but he's overloaded it in Wes. And any of you that have spent time with Wes, spent time in council with Wes, that we, you've had the privilege of sitting one-on-one -on -one with Wes, and you've come and you've laid your stuff out, I can guarantee you none of you feel like you're laying it out in front of this perfect person. But you're laying it out in front of somebody that has gone through what you've been through or understands what you've been through because they've been through something similar. Or Wes is not scared to share the realness of life with you. And that is something that, that is, that's, that's really, really like taught me how to lead well is to lead from places where sometimes you aren't confident, to lead from places where sometimes you, you feel you are just way out of your depth, but knowing that you've got a good team behind you, you've got people behind you that back you and support you, but most of all, knowing you, that you've got a God that loves and cares for you. The love of God, I've never ever understood the love of God in my entire Christian walk, as I have over these last six years in Cedar Hill. And that's not just a credit to Wes and Cor, but it's the likes of Keith and Shelley, that the way they share, the, the cotton community that we've involved in, the Catalyst Connect groups, that, that, uh, a team that, we, um, that we're involved in, and, and people here. God has revealed his heart and his love to us in a way like, I've never, ever experienced in my life before. And I want to thank Wes. I want to thank Wes for being somebody that, that drives that, that drives that, that drives that this whole church thing that we do is about understanding the Father and how much He loves us. And if that's the only thing you ever take away from church, you've gained so, so, so much. God loves us and He cares for us. And our, our goal and our purpose is to love and care for him and love and care for those around us. So thanks, Wes. Thanks, Cor, for, for sharing that and for, for pulling that out of us. You know. And thanks for everybody here. Thanks for, for your words of encouragement. Um, I sometimes step down from here after preaching and I go, what did I actually say? I, that, that, was, that was a load of rubbish. And I'll get somebody come up to me afterwards and go like, Man, that was so beautiful. It really touched my heart, what you said about this. And I go, okay, Lord, at least one person got the message. <laughs> you know, and, and it's daunting standing up here and preaching because of the responsibility that comes with it. You know, I, I think there's a lot of people that think, oh, man, I wish I could get the mic and I could preach. Man, I'm telling you, that's not something that you wish for. It's something that God really graces you with the ability to do that. But... Um, yeah, I just thank you. I thank you, Father, for, for the grace that you've put on our lives. I thank him for, for my beautiful family, um, for their support. I know sometimes they go, oh, Dad, you're going to church function again. Or, oh, Dad, you're going to go counsel somebody again. You know, and, and my family's made sacrifices, just as Wes's family. And any, anybody else who's been in any form of leadership, you understand that your family, not only you, but your family as well, also make sacrifices. And, um, yeah, we're going through a new season even in our family. Uh, my eldest daughter is getting married. Wow. 
so we've only got one more to get rid of, babe. <laughs> and then it's honeymoon. <laughs> but yeah, there's, it's a new season for us, and it's exciting. And, um, and I'm t- I really, I didn't know what to, what to speak about this morning. You know? And, and I, so I didn't prepare anything. I just thought, okay, I'm going to hear what Wes says, and hopefully it's not all of these like praise things. I'm not, I'm not somebody that <laughs> enjoys that. But I appreciate it, Wes, and I appreciate it. And, um, and I know that, that our journey has not ended, and it will not end. And God has knitted us together, um, not only you and I and um, Pat and Mandy and, and this church, but God has knitted us in together in, the, in his kingdom. Hey? And, and it's all, always about what God has got planned for us in the future and he guides our steps and he leads our he leads our path and um, at the moment he's leading our path into a place of rest which we both feel we really really need and um, but I know it's in preparation for something something more Wes and I have even spoken about that you know what is the next thing you know it's like sort of like we just haven't even got into <laughs> to the rest stage and Wes and I are already like hey like you know what's next and and I'm really excited to see where God takes us and where he leads us and and where he guides us and shows us and um yeah I know I know it's going to be in the kingdom I know that God's not this is not a this is not a finished this is a, a preparation for for what God has still got in store for us you know so yeah do you, do you want to say anything babe just want to say Cedar Hill we love you you're our family you're our church family and you'll always be our family so even though we might not be on stage and we might not be leading we're still very much part of this family and you're very much part of our lives. So we really love and appreciate all of you. And some of you we might never have spoken to because we get busy and we don't get to see or speak to too many people um, when there's prayer afterwards. But this is our home. This is our home. And you will always be our family, our church family. So we love and appreciate you. And thank you for loving us the way we are. We really appreciate that. Awesome. So I know we have derailed the service in some way, but it's important for us, the Bible says, to give honor to where honor is due and and to honor our elders, to honor those in leadership. The Bible says they're worthy of double honor. And I think it's a real privilege to have leaders um, that have helped lead with the kind of capacity that Gavin and Wendy have. And so Pat and Mandy. Our <laughs> 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 steps, <are laughs> steps are ordered by the Lord. <laughs> but, but yeah, so we, uh, we, have a, we just have a gift for, uh, for Gavin and Wens, and we just want to say thank you. Um, I know when you grab it, you're going to think, why did I make my wife carry it? <laughs> So thank you. So again, we could have just said, thanks, Gav, handshake, but uh, he, we're a family, and we honor those that have been part of our lives. So again, I want to say this as, as we close, and we're going to close by praying for Gavin and when so I'm going to get you guys up in a moment. We'll just pray over you, and we'll pray over everybody, and we're going home a bit early today. But um, I want to say, Gav may, again, is the kind of person that doesn't need a title to lead, and none of you need a title to lead, by the way. Okay? All right. But Gavin still remains a father in our house. A father who loves for and cares for the community that's around him. Loves uh, to serve the Lord and his purposes. And so for that, we say thank you. I was saying to him this morning, I felt a little bit nervous because we never done anything like this. I was like, oh, okay, let's just give it a go and just honor them and thank them and, and all those kinds of things. But we really do appreciate you. And Courtney and Rachel, thank you for letting your mom and dad serve hey it's like my kids as well you guys going out for dinner again can we come no all right oh it's like you guys are always having dinner and you're hanging out and we're gonna, but it's just part of those things so can i ask you to come up and we just pray with you this morning i know that um the little i know the girls are not so excited about the public but would you mind coming to stand with your mom and dad <laughs> we'll just pray and um
Lord, um, we've said a lot of things, but I just want to say again, thank you for Gavin and Wins. Thank you for this family who love you, who are passionate about you. Gavin and Wendy are passionate about serving you and loving you and going after you. Thank you for uh, their heart to serve. Thank you for their, their diligence, Lord, in whatever they put their hands to. They give it the best that they've got. And it's often the most beautiful thing. And Lord, I thank you that you continue to direct their steps and, uh, and into the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, into being led by you, Father God. But thank you for all that they've sacrificially sowed into this community. And I thank you, Lord, that it is not a seed that is neglected. It's not a seed that will not bear fruit. But I thank you, Lord, that all that they've sown will come up a harvest in their future. That as you continue to lead them and direct their steps, that they continue to walk in your blessing, your favor, your grace, and your comfort. Thank you, Lord, that all that they put their hands to would prosper, increase, and grow. Thank you, Lord, that you continue to lead them into positions of leadership and authority, to lead people, to love people, to serve them, and to help them grow and increase. And so, Lord, we speak blessing over them and over their daughters. We speak your grace to continue to flourish in their lives. And I thank you, Lord, that after they've rested well, we can get Gab to preach again. <laughs> It's a little request from the pastor. But no, Lord, I just bless them. We thank you for their friendship and kindness. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on. Let's give them a more. All righty. I'll give them a hug afterwards. We'll be close to service here this morning. But can I ask you all to stand? Over the next couple of weeks, we have um, the bishop in the house, Keith Duplessis, is going to be preaching. And uh, I know that Shelley did an amazing job yesterday. Thank you, Shelley. Core got home. She was like, wow. She had painted a face mask. I was like, what does this mean? You know, it seemed a little aggressive. There was a lot of red in there. I thought, do we have problems here? What's going on? So ladies, I hope you can all decipher what it is and how you painted those face masks. But uh, there's a lesson in there for us all. But over the next couple of weeks, uh, Keith is, uh, we actually have, sorry, Greg and Sue um, Stephen with us uh, from Emmanuel Church next Sunday. And then Keith and Shelley uh, are with us on the 1st and the 8th. Um, and then Sid Jolson is with us on the, on the next Sunday. It's because Cor and I leave for uh, the America to go preach in the States for two weeks on the 4th of September. But when we get back, we're going to start a, a, a series out of the book of Ephesians. Because the book of Ephesians tells us how to be as the people of God in many ways. How to walk with the Lord and walk with one another. And I want to say this to you. This is the challenge as I end this morning. Because Gavin Wenz are stepping aside from leadership uh, in a formal way in our church. They're still serving in our house and they're a mom and a dad in this house. And we pray that God continue to use them faithfully. But when any person steps aside from leadership in that capacity, there's room for others. And the reality is, is that God has called men and women in this house to serve, to serve in different capacities. And I love that even in Gav, considering that, it's like where someone else is going to take a season to lead. And I want to ask you to faithfully pray and say, Lord, what is my responsibility in this house? What are you calling me to? How do I be a father or a mother in this house to love and to serve the people of God in the way that we are supposed to? Because God is going to, I really believe, in the closing months of this year, begin to work in us as a people, that we begin to step up to the things that God has called us to. So Father, thank you for your blessing on this house. Thank you that you've led us faithfully to this point, and you will continue to lead us faithfully to the next. Thank you for your grace, your favor, and your blessing. Thank you that every man and woman in this room, Lord, has the privilege of being led by you, their steps being directed by you. May you lead them in, in straight paths. May your blessing, your favor, and your grace abound towards them. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, amen, amen, amen. Thank you, family, for being with us. Join us tonight if you'd like to. But have a wonderful, blessed rest of the Sunday and have a wonderful, God-filled week. In Jesus' name, amen.